What is Aristotle really getting at in this passage? He's talking about the function of a human being. What is the function or purpose of a human being? It is to live in a political community and contribute to the betterment of that community. The whole is prior to the part in the sense that the part presupposes it. The idea of the whole must first be there before the part can be understood. And the whole itself must first be there before the part can have or exercise a function. We see that the political community exists by nature and that it is prior to the individual. The proof of both propositions is the fact that the political community is a whole and that individuals are simply its parts. Not being self-sufficient when they are isolated, all individuals are so many parts, all equally depending on the whole, which alone can bring about self-sufficiency. The man who is isolated, who is unable to share in the benefits of political association, who has no need to share because he is already self-sufficient, is no part of the political community, and therefore must be either a beast or a god. Man is thus intended by nature to be part of a political whole, and there is therefore an imminent impulse in all men towards an association of this order. Man, when perfected, is the best of all animals, but if he be isolated, he is the worst of all. That is why, if he be without a political community, he is a most unholy and savage being, and worse than all others in the indulgence of lust and gluttony. Justice belongs to the political community, for justice is an ordering of the political association. Aristotle uses the word justice here, but I think today we would be more inclined to use the word virtue. Virtue, meaningful or purposeful existence, is tied to life in a political community. When the Greek city-states waned, the Roman Empire emerged to be the center of Western civilization. The Romans took this concept of virtue that the Greeks had associated with life in the political community, or the polis, and transposed it onto the empire. Meaningful existence was being a Roman. In fact, the Romans considered anyone who was not Roman to be a barbarian. They particularly thought of the Germanic tribes of Northern Europe in this regard. The Vandals and the Visigoths were so thoroughly uncivilized that they didn't even shave the hair off their faces. The Latin root of the English word barbarian means facial hair. With the proverbial decline and fall of the Roman Empire, the Christian church came to dominate Western civilization. During the church's dominance, the concept of virtue that the Greeks had associated with the polis and the Romans associated with the empire was transposed onto the community of believers. Meaningful existence was being part of the universal Catholic church. The worst thing that could possibly happen to a person in, during the Middle Ages, a fate worse than death, was to be excommunicated from the church. When the church no longer could sustain its influence in the face of the emerging nation-states and the powerful monarchies of the early modern period, this corporate concept was projected onto the nation-state. Purpose of existence for the individual was tied to the nation-state as projected through the governing monarch and the goal of empire-building. 